I'm Anthony Chen, consultant uh, rheumatologist from London, United Kingdom, and I'm here at ULA 2023 in Milan and reporting for Room Now. There's been some uh, interesting information on JAK inhibitors. These are small molecules um, that we use in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, and there's been more developments. I've written an article uh, here on the Room Now uh, platform uh, with regards to its risk in um, cardiovascular disease uh, in rheumatoid arthritis, uh, refer you to that article, but also there's been new um, information from um, EULA 2023 today. First is an oral presentation, uh, it's OP132. And here they, they look at the risks of uh, cancer and cardiovascular uh, disease in patients receiving uh, JAK inhibitors. A lot of this has come on as a result of the oral surveillance study, which uh, you will now be quite familiar with, where this was a study looking at uh, the outcomes uh, with cardiovascular disease, uh, venous thromboembolism, and also with cancer in comparison to TNF. Uh, going back to this study, uh, OP132, this uh, had um, follow-up for 10 years with patients with seropositive rheumatoid arthritis, there were over 101,000 patients uh, in this uh, study, so it's a, it's a big study. Uh, and what they have shown is that, in fact, in this study, there was no uh, increased uh, risk of, um, of uh, patients having uh, cancer uh, or cardiovascular disease uh, compared to the patients who were not on JAK inhibitors. So the difference with this study compared to the oral surveillance, so then this wasn't a comparison with uh, TNF inhibitor. These are patients who uh, were or were not, were not on uh, JAK inhibitors. The incidence rate ratio um, for this study was um, uh, 0 0.88 uh, for cancer uh, and uh, 0 0.91 uh, for uh, cardiovascular disease. Uh, so it did not show the, a significant increase uh, compared to um, what would be expected uh, for this group uh, on patients with uh, JAK inhibitors. So this um, uh, perhaps would give us some, uh, some reassurance about the, its use uh, long term. Uh, I think study designs are really important uh, when looking at some of these uh, outcomes. Uh, another study was uh, POSTER 0831. Uh, again, uh, this is a study um, trying, uh, looking at the uh, incidence of cancer this is a French study, and in this uh, study, uh, the patients were on tofacitinib uh, for their rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, this was the relation study. Uh, again, it had a 10 years uh, worth of follow-up in patients, uh, and there was over 39,000 patients uh, followed up in this time. Uh, and they looked at the, um, the impact uh, of, um, of uh, patients having cancer compared to... Um, in JAK inhibitor treated patients compared to those uh, on TNF treatment. Uh, and the hazards ratio was 0 0.76 uh, in patients who were treated with uh, JAK inhibitors and the confidence interval was 0 0.44 to 1.32. Uh, so this does not show an, an increased risk uh, of cancer um, compared to TNF uh, treatment uh, in patients who um, for cancer. Uh, uh, compared to what we know uh, from other studies. One of the uh, things that we consider is the use of uh, TNF um, so, uh, and JAK inhibitors, particularly when choosing um, the, the treatment choices in patients who may have cardiovascular risks. Uh, in another presentation today here at EULA 23, uh, the oral presentation 133, uh, which is an interesting study uh, where they looked at how did the uh, JAK inhibitors perform in people who, who actually have cardiovascular risk? So uh, older age, smokers, and patients with known cardiovascular uh, risk, did they perform uh, less well when they were put onto JAK inhibitors compared to those who did not have some of these uh, risk factors? Uh, in this study, they found that, in fact, uh, the efficacy of uh, JAK inhibitors was equally good in these patients who did have these uh, cardiovascular risk factors, such as uh, increased age, cardiovascular risk, and also smokers. Uh, it, 
I think these three studies would tell us that we have to be certainly cautious uh, uh, knowing from the oral surveillance study uh, with regards to the use of uh, JAK inhibitors that we would counsel and also assess our patients for cardiovascular risk. But where there is a potential benefit uh, for these patients as compared to not having sufficient control of their rheumatoid arthritis, and these control can come by the use of JAK inhibitors, then we can use them cautiously, uh, but to have a good monitoring of these patients uh, going forward so that we try to minimize any potential cardiovascular risks or in the other case, uh, any um, cancer risk such as uh, non-melanotic uh, skin cancer. But it also reassures us that in the real world data uh, from studies going back to 10 years now, that uh, there is an overall uh, profile that will be beneficial for the use of JAK inhibitors in these uh, group of patients when, uh, when perhaps there are not many uh, options for these patients to, or effective treatments for these patients where they may have exhausted other biologic options. So what we do need is, a, is more a careful uh, follow-up and study, especially for cancer longer term, to assess uh, the potential risk long term. But overall, uh, some reassuring data from uh, the three uh, presentations here today at uh, EULA 2023. I'm Anthony Chan uh, and uh, reporting from EULA 23 here in Milan for Room Now. Thank you.